All right, West Melbourne and Coco in the 12U game. As West Melbourne, I mean, could you get any more exciting than the last game as West Melbourne scores 21 unanswered in 10U to topple Vero Beach, who had a 19 nothing lead in that one. And now we're on to the 12U game. And as West Melbourne, Dan Hunger, Sherrod Burgess, Michael Lockhart, Tommy Nance, Bill Palmer, Kyle Sandiford, Brandon Shackelford. Can't read the rest of them. Shivers and Michael Walker, team mom, Sabrina Looney. And uh, for that is for West Melbourne for Coco. Coach Antonio Williams, Robert Bumgarner, Tyler Bumgarner, Zach Tucker, Anthony Williams. And we're underway. And Jamari Williams. And straight up the gut. Good run. Still on his feet. All the way out beyond the 50-yard line. And West Melbourne starts fast here. Great run back by number three. And that is Hunter Rebus. And here comes that West Melbourne offense. I formation. Coco with seven guys on the line of scrimmage. And that speed from the edge comes in and shuts it down quickly. We saw speed in the first half of that last game for Vero Beach. And I tell you what, whatever halftime adjustments were made, West Melbourne did a great job controlling it in the second half. Quarterback. Elijah Burris for West Melbourne, number five. Just underway, nine minutes to play in the first. And I think the guard was pulling on that one. Yep. Nerves. Second and 15. Nine minutes left in the first. Quick pitch. The ball's out. And Coco said they had it. They don't. And it'll be third down and 16 now. And right now, Coco is flying off those edges. Burris checks in. They show Blitz up the middle. They bring it. Throws. Caught. And that'll be fourth and nine. Good pitch and catch, though. That was Chavis Shackelford on the catch. So it'll be fourth down and nine for West Melbourne. I didn't see West Melbourne's, uh, this team play this year. I did see this 12U Coco team play. And I have to say, from all the teams, youth football teams I've seen this year, they were the best out of all of them I saw. So, Snap. Rolls, oh, off the edge with the blitz. And in with the sack from the corner was Amir Littles. And that will be a turnover on downs. And with 6.51 to play in the first quarter, the Coco Tigers offense will take the field. 
I, I, I mean, he had no shot to set up. Littles was in there in the blink of an eye. Nasir Warwick in the backfield. Quarterback is number eight. Joseph Watkins Jr. throws. Under throws his intended target. Checking in is number 21, Khalil Floyd. Just underway here. 6.45 to play in the first. No score between the Tigers and West Melbourne. Straight up the... Oh, my. That's how you stop that fierce Coco rushing attack. Shutting the door up the middle. Fifteen? Nope, so it's a 15-yard penalty against Coco here. You can't do that, young man. Unsportsmanlike conduct, so that'll back the Tigers up 15 yards. Discipline has got to be there. We didn't see a lot of penalties in that last game. West Melbourne is always an organization, 51 years, always well coached, always well disciplined. You have to match that discipline on the football field, so you can't do things like that. But listen, I mean, Coach Williams is, has, uh, has done some, <laughs> some big-time things as well, so I'm sure he'll have a conversation. This will be an empty set here with five wide receivers. Fakes the jet sweep. He's going to keep it himself, and he's only going to pick up about seven, and that's going to be fourth down. So West Melbourne has come up with a uh, pretty good game plan here early on to stop that Coco Tiger offense. So it'll be fourth down and 20. I don't think I've seen them in this situation all year. Joseph Watkins, Jr., the quarterback. We're going to quick kick this. A little line drive. Takes a nice Tiger bounce, and they quickly get down there and jump on it. Good play by special teams there. And West Melbourne will get the ball back for their second possession here. With 5-10 to play in the first, and no score. First and 10, what does Bill Palmer Sr. have in store today for this Tigers defense with he calls the plays for the West Melbourne offense. Nice hole, closes quickly, but a gain of about five, and it'll be second and five for West. Oh, they say that's a fumble. And I think it is. And it is a fumble, and that's going to be Coco Tiger football. As the ball comes out, 
and Coco will take over first and ten. The first big break of the game goes the Tigers' way, and they'll take over first and ten on the West Melbourne 28-yard line. Back on the field come the Coco Tigers offense with new life following the fumble. First and 10 at the West Mill 28. Yeah, that's, yep, yeah, can't do that. And that's going to be legal motion, false start, you pick it. And that's going to back them up five yards. Get three guys moving, set, move again, set, move again. Yep. <laughs> and it's now first and 15 at the 33 for Coco. Five minutes to play in the first quarter. No score. Turns gives. A little space outside, turns the corner, stays in bounds. He's going to pick up 10 yards. It's a good run. Who was that? I think it was Desai Farrell. Four, number four, yeah, Desai Farrell on the carry. On a sweep. I got this, don't worry. Streams, the fake streams are coming fast and furious. Turns, gives this time. The other side cuts back, reads it, cuts back in again. And still on his feet, in for a Coco Tiger touchdown. That's either eight or six. It's either Watkins or Camden Allen. And with 4-10 to play. In the opening quarter, 6 nothing. Coco on top. He got in there quick, didn't he? So that's pot kill, and that's points off turnovers, and that's something West Melbourne can ill afford to provide Coco today. That's just vision. And they're going to kick, and they can kick. I saw, I saw him kick two extra points against Vero Beach earlier this year. And that one is good. And with 4-10 to play in the first quarter, Coco on top, 8 to nothing. Coach Bill giving instructions down there. Hold on to the football. I would imagine would be amongst them. What a kick. Down to the 20. Out to the 30. Cross the 30. Still on his feet. He could be gone if he can cut the corner. Still got to beat Phillips. He will not. And that is a fantastic run. A 50-yard return. Who was that? 23. Great job there by J. 
Chavis Shackleford. Shackleford got ahead of steam, and boy, he just could not be stopped. And Phillips wisely hanging around, tracks him down. And back out comes West Melbourne's quarterback. Jackson Mobley. I read the wrong number before. I said it was Elijah Burris. It's Jackson Mobley. So that's on West Melbourne in first and 15. And right now, West Melbourne shooting themselves in the foot a little bit here. 3.57 to play in the opening quarter. And Jackson Mobley gets the call from Coach Palmer. Referee says, wind the clock. Good run. I thought it, I thought they they moved the yard marker back. Okay. Oh, you waved the flag off. Okay. So second and six, you'll take four yards every time. What's four times three, Caleb? That's right. You still got it. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. Second and six for West Mel. Stick going in Denver. Well, stick. Have fun in Denver. Two forty-two. But glad you're watching. And that's a gain of one. Third down and four. I got you. Have some fun, my man. Have some fun. Mobley throws, caught, out, and that's a fumble. And another Coco Tiger recovery. I think if you had a chance to watch that again, I don't know that he made enough moves for it, but he made enough for it calling a fumble. And it's hard to argue either way or the other, but with 2.11 to play, West Melbourne has again turned the football over, and the Coco Tigers... They strike fast, so. First and ten. Coco from their own 23. Little bubble screen here. Oh, what a block. Well, that's a gain of 17 and a Coco Tiger first down. Uh, next game starts uh, probably about an hour and a half. An hour, 15, 20 minutes. That's Edwards on the reception. Nice play by the Tigers there on first down. Keon Edwards, first and 10 at their own, 41. 150 to play in the first quarter. Caleb's going to take care of the second quarter. Bubble screen, other side. Slips, falls, gets up. Knee doesn't hit, and he breaks tackles, and he's still on his feet. Goodness gracious, look at that run. Holy smokes, what a run. Is that Jaden uh, 9 or 
It was, I think it was number nine, Jade Jordan or Joseph Watkins, one of the two. Referee says, my time. All right, Kilm's going to get it now. I got to step away for a few minutes. Be right back here. So we got uh, first and ten here for the Tigers. Forty-seven yard line. And hands off there, number four, and escapes the tackle. Can't escape the rest of the rush. And that West Melbourne defense coming up and making the play. Making it second and 15 for the Tigers. I'd like to welcome on Ryan Ryan Poole, Alex Goins, every, and everyone else watching here on the Brevard Sports Network. Twelve U ACYAA Super Bowl. Five seconds left, and Coco, I don't think he's going to take another snap. That will be the final play of this first quarter with your score, Coco 8, West Melbourne 0. We'll be back with second quarter action right here on the Brevard Sports Network. All right, folks, we are back here. Second quarter action. They took maybe 30. We are just starting the second quarter. Fresh 10 on the clock. Coco up 8-0 to zero as the Tiger, as they flip the field. First and 10 from the, or uh, second and 15 here. And that ball's fumbled. And West Melbourne comes along with the sack. See if we can get a number for you here, folks. What a sack there by the West Melbourne defense. And it's now third, third and 25. Tigers come out in the empty set and whistle will be blown. Delay of game called on the Tigers. So that'll move him back. So it's now third and 30. Or as our good friend Sean Hartman would say, third and a trip to Jamaica. And uh, the Tigers are going to call a timeout. And uh, head coach uh, Antonio Williams is going to ask his team, well, what's going on? Why, you know. 
Why are we stopping ourselves here? Delay, I mean, with the delay game, there was a 10-yard sack. Score is 8 to nothing in favor of the Coco Tigers. 9.03 left to go here in Quada number two. Beautiful, chilly night for football. What am I talking about? This is a beautiful night in Florida. Anytime you're not sweating off. Come out in the pistol. Quarterback rolls near side. Fires deep downfield and overthrows his receiver. Was looking for number four. Desai Farrell. Thank you, Coach Goins. Appreciate the kind words. Coco back in the pistol. No, no huddle here. And that's going to be a quick kick, and it's off. It's off his, uh, his blockers behind there. Which, uh, which, which NFL team? Uh, the Miami Dolphins. The, uh, the butt punt. And West Melbourne with their best starting field position. Could this be the, start, the spark West Melbourne needs with 8.47 left to go here in quarter number two? And here comes that offense. Quarterback, Jackson Mobley. Under center, in the eye. Gives it to the fullback, and the fullback fights for maybe a yard. May have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. They'll give him a yard. Second and nine here. For West Melbourne. Ball just shy of the zone six red zone. Yes, eight to nothing is the score in favor of Coco. But can West Melbourne capitalize on these on this excellent field position they have received? I formation. And whistles will blow this one dead. Delay of game called on West Melbourne. So now West Melbourne takes a delay game, and it's now second and 14. Ball sitting on the 35, or 25, I promise I can count. Seven and a half minutes left to go here in quarter number two. Coming out in a wing package. Mobley fires, and he overthrows his tight end there. And it will now be third and 14 for West Melbourne. Checking into the game now for West Melbourne is number five. Oh, oh, he 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 runs to the sidelines to get his play call. Got it. I was like, what? How is he checking in? Come back with the play call, Caleb. 
One back in the backfield and timeout called by West Melbourne. Little miscommunication there. And coaches are asking, what's the miscommunication? What a fantastic day of football we've had so far. Vero Beach goes and brings home two awards, or brings home two trophies in the flag and 8U game. 10U, what an amazing finish we had in the 10U game. West Melbourne comes back to win that one with two onside kicks. Mobley gives it to on the end around. And that'll be a gain of a couple yards there on the play. It's now fourth down and 12. West Melbourne won the 10U game. They in a come from behind victory. At one point down 19 to 6. They come back and score within the final 15 seconds. Of the game and, and, and just, yeah, a 21-19 victory. It, 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 if you have time this weekend, go back and rewatch that game. That game was just unbelievable. And off, you're on fourth down. And a turnover on downs, that Coco defense. Turnover on downs, and the Coco offense will take over with 6.33 left to go here in quarter number two. Up 8-0, to zero, looking to put more points on the board. I'd like to welcome Coach Jiskum. If, uh, if, if anyone has an update on the Rockledge High School score, Please uh, drop it in the comments. We know uh, Rockledge plays tonight against uh, Daytona Mainland. Anyone has any updates from that game, feel free to drop them in the chat. So here comes the Tigers. Gives it off, and there, there he goes, number four. Picks up a first down and then some. A nice 20-yard pickup for that young man, number four. On my roster here. Desai Farrell. All right, thank you very much. 10 to 7, Rockledge Trails Mainland. And now, again, quick quick back to the line as the officials are discussing something. Ah, there, there's an injured. Yep, uh, there's, a, there's an injured uh, Mustang or uh, an injured West Melbourne player on the sideline. Couldn't see him because he was uh, blocked by everybody on the sideline. But we do have an injury timeout with 6.23 left to go here in quarter number two. Your score, Coco, eight to zero. As they're, they're, they're checking the young man out here on the sideline. They just moved him off the field because he, he was already down in the on the sideline, so they just kind of helped him get get out of play. And now he's back up on his feet and walking under his own power. Pharrell, one of the three backs in the backfield for Coco.
Three backs, two tight ends in this formation. There's the toss and it, that ball's fumbled. Couldn't, couldn't get. He just dropped the football and luckily was able to fall back on it. Coco will take, Coco will retain possession. L loss of about six yards on the play. Second and 16 for the Tigers. Whatever, whatever play they were about to run, they're going to attempt it here again. Gives it to the first back. And he is immediately swallowed up by that West Melbourne defense. Number 24 for West Melbourne on the tackle. There's no 24, so it might have been 54. Bryce Grumchet, and I apologize if I if I messed that last name up. And here's Pharrell. Pharrell down the sideline, runs over a defender still on his feet, and he is still. How is he still going? And Pharrell picks up a gain, another gain of about 20 yards on the play. But. It was all for naught. And once again, the chains move before the, call, before the penalty call is made. That was an illegal block in the back. So here come the Tigers again now. Third, third and about 25. Pharrell. Pharrell shakes off a tackler, can't shake off a third tackler, but not before picking up a gain of about 10 yards on the play. So fourth and 17 now for the Tigers. And the last time they punted, they had the butt punt. So... Hoping for a, a better punt here as they are kicking into the wind. There's a slight breeze. Or they're kicking with the wind. The wind is going with them. So if they can get it up and get some power into it. It's actually a nice high punt. Takes a Coco bounce. And it will be downed at about the 44-yard line. And that's where West Melbourne will take over. First and 10 with 3.42 left to go here in the second quarter. Your score, Coco 8, West Melbourne nothing. Here in the second quarter. Coming up at, coming up at halftime, absolutely nothing. Sends a man in motion. They get off to the deep back and the deep back. He's got some running room. Look at that young man go. Slips out of a tackle. And there's a flag there at the end of the play. That's number six. 
Camden Allen on a huge run. Picks up a gain of about 15 on the play. We'll see what the penalty is. It was thrown late. Personal foul, face mask. That's a 15 yard face mask. So a 15 yard run plus 15 tacked on. That's a 30 yard play right there. First and 10 from about the 19 yard line. Sends a man in motion. And they went to give it to the fullback. That fullback there. Sorry, that was Carson Nance on that previous carry. Carson Nance was the running back for West Melbourne who picked up 15 yards, picked up the 15-yard face mask. And it'll be first and 10 from the 20-yard line for West Melbourne. As a timeout was called, 3.28 left to go here in quarter number two. Coco up eight to zero. Coach Bill Palmer there. Trying to dial something up. Does West Melbourne have something up their sleeve here that they, they could run? Carson Nance, the deep back here. Under, Mobley, under center. Mobley fires, and it's going to be incomplete. Great defense from behind there. Number zero on the pass breakup. That's Javon Scott. Javon Scott knocked that football out of the receiver's hands and it's now second and 10 from the 20 yard line Mobley under center sends a man in motion gives it to the fullback and the fullback will pick up a yard maybe two And that'll bring up third and eight. They'll give him two yards on the play. Coming up on three minutes left here in quarter number two. Mobley comes with the play to the huddle. Carson Nance. And this play will be blown dead. Timeout called by West Melbourne. And that's got to be all their timeouts. They, uh, they should have no timeouts left here in the first half. Two and a half minutes left to go. They, uh, they're not given to you to take into the locker room. So. Yes, use them, but. That's now three timeouts they've used in the last minute. Eight to zero, Coco on top with 2.35 left to go here in quarter number two. Twelve U A C Y A A Super Bowl. I'd also like to give a huge congratulations to the Grand Cheer Champions, the Grand Champion of, of Cheer, the Bayside Bears, won two titles in Cheer competition. Yeah. 
And that was Carson Nance. And he'll pick up a gain of two yards. Fourth and six for West Melbourne here as we approach the two minute mark. Got to get to the 10 yard line for a first down. Mobley tosses to Nance. Nance makes one guy miss and he will be brought down short. And it will be turnover on downs. So West Melbourne had their best field position to start a drive and could not convert. Mel or, uh, Coco will take over first and 10 from the 14 yard line, a minute 40 left here in the half. Up eight to zero. It'll be, it'll be interesting to see what Coco does here. Come back in that three back formation. They put both both tight ends on that left side. Toss to Farrell. Farrell down the sideline and finally pushed out of bounds, but not before picking up a Coco Tiger first down. That'll stop the clock with a minute 33 left to go in the half. Check that, that was number 44 for the Tigers. Brandon Scott Jr. Brandon, Brandon Scott Jr. with the nice 13 yard pickup. Gets out of bounds, stops the clock with a minute 33 left. Watkins hands off to Farrell and Farrell tripped up. Great ankle tackle there. Stopped up by number 44 for West Melbourne. That's Lucas Hunger tripping up Farrell. And the clock now runs a minute 10 left in the half. And I don't know if if I'm Coco, I might just be content taking an 8-0 lead into the half. West Melbourne can't stop the clock. Second and six. Watkins fires. Nearly, nearly completed to his receiver. Marcel Evans was the intended receiver. And, you know, that's one Evans wants back bad. That's one he catches. He, he, he That's one he catches in bounds and, and gets out of bounds to stop the clock there. Third down for the Tigers. And Watkins keeping it himself. Watkins with a spin move. Another spin move. Breaks free. 45, 40, 30, 20, 10. Touchdown, Coco Tigers. But there is a flag on the play, and that will negate the touchdown. Holding on the Tigers. Watkins on the keeper. 
with a 60 plus yard touchdown taken back. I mean, he spun out of two tackles, spin moves out of one tackle into another tackle and then spins out of that one. I mean, look, that circle button is wrecked after that one because those were two of the hardest spins I have ever seen. Thirty seven point one seconds left. Ball on the nineteen yard line. It's third and fifteen. Check that third and fourteen. But Coco has now shown that they have big play capability. It's Joseph Watkins under center. And Watkins is going to try the same play the, the other side. And he will be brought down and stopped by number three. Savone Parrish. And that just might be the final play of the half. So Coco scores on their opening possession. Coco scores on their opening possession and then is held scoreless because of a couple penalties and that defense. All in all, we head to halftime. Coco up eight to zero. We'll be back in about 10 minutes with second half action right here on the Brevard Sports Network. All right, so we can let you watch the cheerleaders. This is the uh, Coco cheerleading squad. We can let you watch the cheerleaders, but unfortunately, uh, due to the music uh, shutting down the stream, we can't let you l hear the music, but we can at least allow you guys to watch the cheerleaders do what they do. These cheerleaders competed in competition earlier today. And so as long as they've been out here, they deserve spotlights too. Unfortunately, we just can't play the music that accompanies their routines.
All right, we are ready to start the second half here. Coco Tigers will receive the ball to start half number two, up eight to zero. Huh. Here comes West Melbourne. That'll be a, a squibber. Nearly recovered. And it will be taken by number 22 of the Tigers. I don't have a number 22 on my roster. Uh, yes, I do. Quion Edwards. Uh, Michael Moffitt, this is, this is 12U. By the way, shout out to Mike Moffitt. Scott Sporting Goods. Always a, a genuine guy and a great business guy to deal with when it comes to sporting equipment. Watkins tosses to the back. He is still going, and that'll be enough for a first down. Needed 10, picks up 12. And what a great run by that back. I believe that was number four. Desai Farrell. And here comes Coco. There's Pharrell, Pharrell! Busts it wide open! 10, five, touchdown! Coco Tigers! But there is a flag on the play. Holding on the Tigers. And that'll that's now the second touchdown negate, negated by a holding penalty. Wow. But you want to talk about a cutback lane. That play was designed to go to the outside. Desai Farrell cuts up, gets inside, and he just split the defense. But all for naught on a holding. And this time Watkins is going to try to run that Quarterback keeper, he's in trouble, splits two defenders. And he'll pick up a gain of a couple. It's now second down in about 19. Second and 19, ball is spotted. Score. The score is eight to zero. Got some discussion going on between an official and a coach. Oh. 
Sideline warning has been given to Coco. But the, the but it looks like they're moving the ball back. So I think they may have called. No, okay, so no, so it is a warning. We're just doing the cha cha slide. Reverse. Do do do. Slide to the left. No? Nobody? Nobody? Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, okay, wait, no. All right, so now, first or second and 19, and a timeout's now called. Yes, 14 you will play at after this game ends. There is 8.34 with a timeout being called with 8.43 left to go in the third quarter. We are in the third quarter of this game. Coco up 8 to nothing. As the fans are telling the people in the other press box to fix the scoreboard, that's not us. That is not us. That is the other press box. <laughs> and there was much rejoicing when the scoreboard was fixed. It, it only took the whole West Melbourne uh, sideline to yell at once. All the fans in the stands got their mission accomplished. The scoreboard is now fixed. 8.43 left to go here in the third. Watkins tosses to Farrell. Decide Farrell has another lane with a stiff arm. Breaks a tackle and finally brought down at the 34-yard line. A huge pickup for Desai Farrell. No flags. So after all that, first down Coco at the 34-yard line. Watkins takes a snap. He's going to toss to Scott Jr. And Scott down the sideline. One man to be spins off a tackler into the end zone. Touchdown, Coco. No flags on the play. This touchdown will stand. Brandon Scott Jr. And with 7.55 left to go here in quarter number three, Coco extends the lead pending the extra point, 14 to zero. As they're now gonna go for one here. Watkins gives it off to another back who gets in. And with 7.55 left to go in the third quarter, it is 15-0 Coco off of a 34-yard touchdown pass or touchdown run by Brandon Scott Jr. We'll be right back with the kickoff.
right, we are back here off of Brandon Scott Jr. 34 yard touchdown run. The Tigers extend the lead 15 to zero and there's the kickoff. And West Melbourne has a lane, breaks through a set of tackles, breaking another set of tackles and finally brought down at about the 46 yard line. West Melbourne has had a couple of great returns tonight. And even at one point took over with the ball in the 20 yard line, just have not been able to convert any of those opportunities into points. So what adjustments have been made? I formation. And that'll be given off to Carson Nance and Nance will pick up maybe a yard or two on the play. He'll pick up two hard fought yards. It's now second and eight. Seven minutes left here in the third quarter. Mobley gives it to Nance, and Nance fighting his way forward. He'll be close to a Melbourne first down, but there is a flag on the play. Holding on West Melbourne, and that'll back him up 10. And it will be first and 10, no, check that, not first and 10, wow. Second and 17 from the 50 yard line for West Melbourne. 640 left here in the third quarter. And West Melbourne trying to get outside on this Listen, it, it is hard to run east to west on this Coco Tiger defense. And on the carry there was number seven, Ian Cole. Third and 13. For West Melbourne is and a timeout called by West Melbourne as they want to talk about this. Five forty nine left to go here in the third quarter with your score Coco fifteen West Melbourne zero. So, what a great day of football we've had today. Congratulations also to the Bayside Bears cheer, cheer squad. Bayside, Be Bayside Bears cheer squad were the, named the grand champions, the overall champions of this morning's cheer competition of 
the ACYAA cheer competition. Third and 13, they swing pass. And he will be brought down, but not before picking up a nice gain of six yards on the play. Will be marked short of a first down. It is fourth down. Number three on the reception. Savone Parrish with a nice pickup of six yards, and it's fourth and seven for West Melbourne. And Coco is loading up the box. Breaks a tackle. Nance breaks a second tackle. Still fighting. But eventually stopped at the line of scrimmage and will be marked short. Turnover on downs. Coco will take over with 528 left to go in quarter number three. Up 15 to zero. They'll take over on the 45 yard line. West Melbourne's able to get a, a play or two off that, that pops for big yards, and then it, the, their drive, the drive just stalls. So Watkins comes in under center. Three backs in the backfield. And wow. What a, wow, he is gone. Touchdown, Coco Tigers. No flags. Number three. Nasir Warwick. Nasir Warwick. And it's 21 to zero pending the extra point. And Watkins is gonna take it on his own. And they will say he is down. No good, but on a 55 yard touchdown run by Nasir Warwick. Coco Lee extends their lead 21 to zero. With 518 left to go in the third quarter. All right, so a little pooch kick there by the Tigers. And the West Melbourne will take over first and 10 on the 47 yard line.
Allen should be back for the 14U game. And there's Nance. Nance trying to fight his way. And that, Co that Coco defense has just been making plays. First one in there for the Tigers there was number eight, Joseph Watkins Jr. in there to first make contact. Still in the third quarter. I formation with a single wing. And off the right side, Nance again picks up a couple of yards. It's now third and five. Four, 18 and counting left to go here in quarter number three. Tigers up 21 to zero. Mobley, there's a handoff off the right side, picks up another couple of yards. It's gonna be fourth and short. Fourth and about three for West Melbourne here. Coco has not converted a fourth down all night. Or uh, West Melbourne has not converted a fourth down all night. Up the left side. Depends on where they spot this ball. He might be have enough for the first down here. And I think they're going to bring the, the, the measuring sticks out. I think we're going to need a measure. And they're going to call it by eyesight. First down, West Melbourne. Approaching three minutes left in the third quarter. Coco looking to bring somebody. And Nance. Carson Nance there. Score is 21 to zero in favor of the Coco Tigers. Second and five, hands off to the fullback there. The fullback fighting for yards. Finally brought down, but not before picking up a gain of about six yards. It's Third and four for West Melbourne as we just hit the two-minute mark of the third quarter. Two receivers near side, I formation. Gives off to Carson Nance, and Nance will be stopped at the line of scrimmage. And it's now fourth and short again. Fourth and two for West Melbourne.
And off to to Nance and Nance. I don't know. And that that will be enough. Yes, it will be enough for a West Melbourne first down with 45 and a half seconds left to go in the third. 45 and a half left to go in the third. So that's now two first downs West Melbourne has picked up. They found something. And there's the handoff and lots of flags on the play. And that is a false start on West Melbourne. So that'll back them up. First and 15 from about the 38-yard line. Mobley fires, and they have tried that play at least four times today and have not been able to complete it once. They, 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 they send the tight end there on a, a four-yard curl, I guess. Four-yard comeback. And that pass has not been able to be completed all day long. T. Grizzly says, no, hashtag no fly zone. Yeah, that, that, this, uh, this Coco defense is definitely, it's been the no fly zone. There's been a few attempted takeoffs. There's been one completed pass today for West Melbourne. And that was a, uh, a swing pass. Every flight that's attempted to take off past the line of scrimmage has been grounded very quickly. And there's a delay of game on West Melbourne. Second along, there's Nance. And Nance will be swallowed up there by number 15. Justice Anderson. And that will be the final play of the third quarter with your score. The Coco Tigers, 21, West Melbourne, 0. We'll be back with fourth quarter action right here on the Brevard Sports Network. All right, here we go. West Melbourne on some trickery, and it will result in is oh, nearly intercepted. Number eight nearly had the interception. That's Joseph Watkins Jr. It was a it was a faking the toss, so that, so they tossed it to a halfback, and 
that halfback pass nearly just resulted in an interception. It's fourth and long now. Fourth and long. Yeah. Now West Melbourne comes out in the gun, drops back, and the speed of that rush, led by number one, Gabriel Player, gets credit for that sack. And, the, you know, the, 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 there were murmurs whispering in the stadium, well, why haven't they tried throwing the football? Well, because of that. The, 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 the speed of that Coco D line is scary. They just close it, and you, you don't have a shot to get hands on anybody. It's pick your poison. You block one, guess what? There's another two that are coming through that hole ready to go. And and Watkins under center. Watkins on the toss. That was number zero. Javon Scott. Great play, great tackle made there by number twenty-eight, Sean O'Connor. Nine minutes left to go in the game. Watkins gives it to Farrell. Farrell with trying to shake off on a stiff arm. He'll pick up a gain of about four or five yards on the play. It's now going to bring up third down. Okay, so I... Picks up a gain of seven on the play. Third and three. Watkins surveys, fires, got a man open and under threw him. His intended receiver was number 22. Under threw him, he would have had a touchdown. Queon Edwards was the intended receiver and he was wide open. That ball just slightly underthrown. And a timeout taken. 8.23 left to go in the game. I'd like to welcome Pop Jones onto the broadcast. It's good to see you last night, Coach. Nick Parisi. And the quarterback keeper, Watkins Jr., still not down. T bounces to the outside, runs over a defender. He'll pick up a Coco first down and then some. Joseph Watkins Jr. snuck it. Half the defense thought he was down. He stands up hurt. I, he didn't hear a whistle. Bounces it to the outside and picks up an additional 10 yards on that carry. That's a total gain of 15 yards. And Coco now has a first down at about the 25-yard line. And Farrell cuts back, finds the cutback lane. And he'll be brought down, but not before picking up a gain of five or six yards on the play. And we have a final... Brevard County now only has one team left in the FHSAA state tournament as the Rockledge Raiders fall to Daytona Mainland 
16 to 14. Wow, that uh, that that's wow. Look, there's got to be some fight there in that Daytona mainland. At one point, down two touch two scores to O'Galley. Find a way to come back and win that one. And they defeated Rockledge 16-14. First down, and there's number three takes War Warwick. Might have gotten a yard on the play. Might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. Now second and nine for the Coco Tigers. Scott Jr., Brendan Scott Jr. to the corner, into the end zone. Touchdown, Coco Tigers. Check that. That was actually Javion Scott. Javion Scott, touchdown. For the Tigers, and it's 27 to 0. With six and a half minutes left to go here in the game. Warwick. And the extra point is good. Your score. With 6.33 left to go here in the game, 28 to nothing in favor of the Coco Tigers. Vero Beach won the 8U game. Vero Beach won the 6U game, the 8U game, and fell in 10U to West Melbourne in the waning seconds. With 15 and a half seconds left in the game, West Melbourne 10U took the lead and pulled out the come-from-behind victory at one point down 19 to 6. Come back and win 21 to 19 in the, in 10 U and 12 U looks like pending pending a wacky miracle looks like the Coco Tigers are going to take the 12 U Super Bowl and that that kick will go with out of bounds to be a penalty. Julian Montanez, you're right. That was a big comeback. It, and and it, it was so exciting to watch. Coming up next after this game will be the final game of the day, the 14U game between. West Melbourne and Titusville. West Melbourne and Titusville coming up in 14 U action. 6.33 left in this one here. 
West Melbourne will take over first and 10 from the 35. Mobley gives off to Nance and Cam Car Carson Nance just number 11 on the stop for Coco. Eli Elias Wilson. Elias Wilson. I apologize if I'm messing up that, that first name. I, I probably am, and I, I my sincerest apologies. And there's a 15-yard penalty called on the Tigers. Personal foul penalty. Mobley checking with coaching staff who's trying to decide what play they want to run. Finally gets the play call in and Carson Carson Nance And the, the, the Nance was stripped, but not before the whistle was blown. They blew the play dead. Gave him two yards of forward progress. Second and eight. Five minutes left to go in the game. Hand off to Nance, and Nance will pick up a gain of one, and that will now be third and seven for West Melbourne. Timeout taken by the Coco Tigers. Third and seven here. So, 4.53 left to go here in the game as Coco calls a timeout. They are up 28 to zero. And if you're West Melbourne, this is, this is what we call, we call it a pride drive. You want to score for pride right here. And if anyone knows West Melbourne, you know there is pride for that org pride within that organization. All alumni are proud to be from West Melbourne. They just they they love this program through and through. And, I, and I'm not saying Coco or any other organization does it, but doesn't. But you know, th there's just something. And there's the handoff, and he breaks free. And he might have enough for a first down. Yes, he does. First down, West Melbourne. Carson Nance again. Approaching four and a half minutes left to go. A 
approaching four minutes left in the game. I think what what West Melbourne's trying to do is they're just trying to keep the ball at least the rest of the game and number one there on the tackle, Gabriel Player. And, and and I think what West Melbourne's trying to do here is they're just trying to run this clock out and score. I mean, they they, they want to score. You, you don't want to post a goose egg in the Super Bowl. But also, they, they, they want to score for pride. And you know what? I, 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 I like their no, not give up. But you also don't want to give Coco the ball with any extra time to score again either. So, I like it. Practice something heading into next season. Carson Nance gets slung to the ground. Might have gained a yard on the play. Number 52 for Coco on that. Marcel Evans on that tackle. Coming up on two and a half minutes left to play in the game. And there's the handoff there to the fullback. Warwick in on the tackle. Number 44 for West Melbourne on the carry. Lucas Hunger. So in case you haven't heard, Rockledge Raiders season has come to an end tonight. 16-14 loss to Mainland. And, uh, you know, what uh, what adversity they, they had to face in the playoffs. And pl playing without their quarterback. So, you know. And then there was one. Fourth and eight. And Carson Nance is trying. He is still fighting. Moving that pile. And they're going to say he's stripped. He fumbled. It's a, that's a fumble. And here it goes. The Coco Tigers. Into the end zone. Touchdown, Coco. Number three. Nas Nasir Warwick. With the touchdown, no flag, and they're they're gonna just they're, they're gonna run the time off the clock, I think. Nasir Warwick with the scoop and score touchdown. And that will do it. That will be the final play of the game. Nasir Warwick on a 60 plus yard touchdown. To end the game, Coco will pick up the victory and be the ACYAA 12U Super Bowl champions by the final score of 34 to 0. Coming up next, 
Well, well, coming up next, we will have 14U action between the Titusville Terriers and the West Melbourne. I believe I believe that's the West Melbourne Cowboys. I, Coco 12U. Picks up the 12U ACYAA Super Bowl Championship. Final score again, 34 to 0. And uh, we will be back with 14U action right here on the Brevard Sports Network. <laughs> 